It's no surprise that small pocket-sized handguns are the hot-ticket item these days, as they appear to be the answer to being able to be discreetly armed under almost any circumstance. Overlooked in this rush for comfort and concealment are several important facts. These small pistols require more attention to keep them running and more effort to learn to shoot, and ongoing practice is absolutely necessary to shoot them well. And then there's the matter of choosing between a semi-auto or a revolver. So for all of these reasons and more that we discussed today, micro 9mm seem to be losing their appeal. Things to consider Both action types have their own pluses and minuses. Some are apparent and some not so much. Historically, the small double-action revolver is almost guaranteed to allow you to empty the gun without a malfunction, while with all else being equal, a similar-sized semi-auto can malfunction. The trouble is, usually not all else is equal. A revolver can fail to fire right along with the best semi-auto. Both will stop working if bullet jump is encountered. Jump is when the bullet pulls forward in its case due to the abrupt and heavy recoil of one or more rounds already fired. In fact, Smith & Wesson makes particular mention of this in the owner's manual for 357 Magnum chambered small, lightweight revolvers. The same effect happens with any semi-auto, but worsens as the gun's weight decreases and recoil increases, such as with a 40 s and or a 357 SIG chambered gun. All the cartridges in the mag are subject to this. With the revolver, the bullet protrudes from the cylinder face. Then when the cylinder tries to turn to line up another round, the protrusion butts up against the side of the rear of the barrel and stops the cylinder from turning. Clearing the jam Clearing this jam is difficult in both types of guns. With the revolver, the cylinder has to be unlocked and turned in the opposite direction, such that you are able to swing it out and turn it so that it will pass through the frame window. In a semi-auto, when a feeding round has become too long to function through the action, the round most often is angled and wedged between barrel chamber and breech face, with either the mag lips or extractor or both still grasping the round. This, coupled with recoil spring force pushing the slide forward, has the round held and wedged quite firmly. To clear this, the slide must be locked or held back, taking the pressure off the round. The mag ripped out and the slide manipulated, clearing the gun. Preferably, a fresh mag should be used to reload, but if you lack one, the original mag can be used after ensuring the offending round is gone. This should clear it along with, hopefully, not breaking or displacing the extractor. Bullet jump in the semi-auto can also be caused by bullet setback, which occurs when a round is repeatedly chambered, causing the bullet to be pushed into the cartridge case by repeatedly hitting the feed ramp and chamber wall. Setback can also happen to the cartridges in the mag as they bump against the mag wall as the gun moves. Setback also does not lend itself to quick clearing, but worse can happen. When the bullet sets back, it increases chamber pressure. We read a report from Hertenberger AG Austria, a major ammunition manufacturer, where it was determined that a 110-inch setback with a 40 s &W cartridge raised chamber pressure to a dangerously above proof test load level. The same observation was also made by CCI using a 9x19mm cartridge with the same results. The more common semi-auto pistol malfunctions, such as failure to fire, extract, eject, or double feeding, also occur with small semi-autos, but are much more difficult to clear. The clearing drills can be nearly impossible to do with a smaller arm, particularly if you have large hands or fingers, since you have less gun to grab when doing the manipulations. And depending on the gun's design and its caliber, the recoil spring system will be heavier than the one used in the comparable full-sized version. All of these complicate or preclude some of the drills which are effective with the full-sized pistol. What works is the previously described drill of locking the slide back, ripping out the mag and manipulating the slide to clear the gun, then reload with a fresh mag. Mo problems. Operator error can also jam the revolver as the double action trigger must be released fully forward in order to fire another round. For those who were taught to ride the trigger, catch the reset, with a semi-auto, this can be a problem. It's a given that the small, powerful handguns are more difficult to shoot well with the accentuated recoil. The shorter sight makes sighting more difficult, along with good muzzle control. For me, this translates into having less feel as to where the gun is directed. This is one good argument for having a laser on the small guns. Adding to this, the shorter grip often means that you can only take a two, not three finger grip, which also decreases gun control generally. This can be ameliorated with a finger rest mag floor plate or a slightly extended mag, such as by using the Glock 19 mag in the shorter grip Glock 26. If you do this, take care not to grip the gun so that the longer mag pushes past the mag catch. This pushes the top of the mag up far enough to interfere with slide movement. 
Also, if you do a slide lock or empty gun reload with the longer mag, you can drive the mag in far enough to block the slide from moving forward. This can literally be a pain to clear. Also, while a mag collar is a great way to negate these over-insertions, if the collar allows a means of tightening it to prevent slippage, over-tightening will constrict the mag tube which then stops cartridges from feeding. Accidental Activation Another problem with the smaller handguns is that the mag catch or cylinder release can be accidentally activated when the smaller gun is held with two hands, and sometimes even with one hand. There is just too much hand for the gun size. The buttons get tripped and leave you with a one-shot or a no-shot at all gun when the mag drops out or the cylinder opens, spilling cartridges. With a revolver, sometimes the cylinder moves out of alignment, but it stays in the frame and you don't notice it until you find the trigger will not move. Rounding the release is a good idea since, with the smaller frame, the catch is more likely to dig into your hand. Some small semi-autos have a ledge around the catch added to help prevent these problems. Another problem to watch out for, an ambidextrous mag catch, which for us is an accident which will happen. Another inadvertent malfunction is when you overdo your high grip on the gun and the web of your hand is now up far enough to slow or stop slide movement and get cut in the process. Take a look. In addition, safe gun handling is more difficult with the small semi-autos, such as doing a visual and tactical inspection for ejection port windows are naturally smaller, making the chamber area hard to see. To the good, the minuscule port window helps keep crud out, but the best we manage to do is look, as the port window is too small for our fingers to feel the rear of the chamber. And with these small semi-autos, it is even more important to try not to catch a live round when clearing the gun, particularly if the pistol design uses its firing pin as the ejector. The Baby Browning in 25 ACP is one such example of this. The firing pin ejector can strike and fire the cartridge being extracted. All of these problems are at worst an irritant if you spend time getting past the initial awkwardness of working with everything being smaller. The key here is spending the time. We probably don't need to suggest it, but using dummy rounds is the best and safest way to learn the idiosyncrasies of these smaller handguns. Painful Recoil in Micro Revolvers Various shooters we've worked with have described the recoil of a lightweight J-frame, particularly with 38 plus P or 357 Magnum on board, as sharp, significant, unpleasant, distracting, painful. I'd rather smash my hand with a hammer. I'm done shooting that thing. Do you want it? Insert your favorite string of colorful profanity here. It's not surprising that with a loaded weight of less than 16 ounces and no springy reciprocating slides to fancy barrel locking mechanisms to absorb or redirect the energy, the recoil of these pocket rockets makes them more than a handful and more than most shooters can handle effectively. With hot 158 or 180 grain 357 Magnum loads, you might literally feel like the gun blew up in your hand after the first shot. The recent polymer frame models from SNW, Ruger, and Taurus may make a little difference in felt recoil, but for recoil shy or new shooters, even standard defensive cartridges can hurt so much that they don't want to shoot the revolver again, let alone practice with it enough to become competent. What's more, if you're going to have to carry your handgun in a holster on your belt, Many experts would argue you may as well go with a thinner, lighter semi-auto pistol with double or even triple the ammunition capacity and arguably superior ballistic performance. Which brings us to our next point. Thick and difficult to conceal. We've forever heard that the smooth, rounded shapes of revolvers can help them conceal better in some situations than similar sized autos. However, you can't get around the fact that revolvers are thick. The thinnest five-shot revolver cylinder is wider at 1.3 inches or more than the overall width of nearly every pocket-capable semi-auto pistol. If you carry IWB inside the waistband, you're going to notice that thickness. Even if you pocket carry, that bulky cylinder might stand out like a sore thumb, depending on your choice of clothing and pocket holster. Revolver grips small and slippery. For decades, you could get J-frame revolver grips from S&W made out of any material you wanted, as long as it was wood. Most shooters found them too small and narrow to be useful, and too slippery to afford effective recoil control. Nowadays, rubber grips have become de rigueur on CCW revolvers, and due to the painful recoil factor we discussed just now, some grips offered on these tiny revolvers have become bloated to the point of ridiculousness. If you have to strap a large, bulky, padded grip to your small, concealable revolver to make it tolerable to shoot, suddenly it's not quite so small and concealable anymore. Even small-handed shooters may find that the standard concealable round-butt grips 
don't offer enough to hold on to. Limited ammunition capacity. Even the smallest 9mm semi-auto pistol has a mag capacity of 6 rounds. In 38 Special 357 Magnum, the small revolvers we're outlining here have a cylinder capacity of 5 rounds. You can get 6 or even 8 shots if you drop to smaller calibers, like 32 or 22 LR, but they typically don't perform well in defensive applications. Poor sights and a short sight radius. Compared to similar sized semi-autos, J-frames and similar revolvers have a very short sight radius, or the distance between the rear and front sights. A longer sight radius usually means a more accurate sight picture. Furthermore, to ease a carry revolver's egress from a pocket or purse, most of them have very basic flush-mounted rear sights and simple ramp front posts, with no provision for changing out of the sights for more visible ones unless you involve a gunsmith. Heavy, long triggers and problems with accuracy. The light weight that makes these revolvers a joy to carry, combined with a heavy and long trigger pull of up to 12 pounds or more, makes them particularly difficult to shoot well without good hand strength and a lot of regular practice. Think about it this way. If the gun itself weighs less than one pound and it takes eight, 10, or even 12 pounds of pressure to move the trigger to the rear, and that trigger stroke is much longer than on a semi-auto, it's much easier for the front sight to stray off the target as you stroke the trigger through its travel. Some smaller shooters may feel the trigger is impossible to use at first blush and have a hard time believing how much pressure they have to exert to make the gun fire. This, combined with the sharp, even painful recoil mentioned earlier, places the small revolver in the expert category of CCW guns, rather than, as many people believe, the novice category. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching, and we will see you another time.